All right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to these divinity, these divine tarot. Thank you for joining in with me today. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome back to all the former subscribers and welcome to all the new subscribers. Once again, thank you all for joining in with me today. As you see from the title of the video, we're going to go ahead and dive into this beautiful monology series. And I believe this is episode five. Interesting that it is episode five. Before I just dive into the channeling, it should go without saying, please do check the description box for any information that you may want or need to know. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to let me know. As it states in the description box, these readings are intended to be timeless. Time and energy are fluid, meaning you could have already gone through this. You may currently be going through this and or this may be a prophetic message to come if you decide to embrace and embody the advice that spirit has for you. Now, I know, I know, I know that we are technically kind of honing in on a specific um, energy in regards to the moon and it stations or you know transitions on particular days technically by you know how we have it in the, on the calendar or whatever but y'all don't get tied up on that okay because i promise you time is irrelevant time is there's no such thing so i you know without going all into that just understand that this could occur at any point in your life it depends on you and your timeline and where you are on your journey all right now, it is heightened time and high vibes that it could potentially occur for some of you exactly on this time, you know what I'm saying, or around this time, because keep in mind that the energy of the moon, no matter what sign it is in, it can be a couple of days before and or after, um, even up to a week, right, for the energy to be, um, I just heard of value, but it's always a value, right? But anyway, where it can be very effective in that particular sign or um, when it's in that energy. You understand what I'm saying? And of course, it affects us all the same, just like it does the planets. So with that being said, keep in mind that they are general. However, now it still may resonate with you some shape, form or fashion in your personal life. But I may not not all may resonate with you. And I mean, that's just that's just what it is. And that's perfectly fine. I may be talking about someone to whom you're closely connected, friend, family or foe. I do not know. Only you know your life. So y'all be telling you all the time, please don't force that shoe to fit if it doesn't. I'm not responsible for your feet, your toes, nor them currents hurting or developing <laughs> when you try to force it. You understand what I'm saying? Be self-aware, be self-accountable. You will never be led astray. Allow your free will and discernment to lead the way like for real. Um anyway i think that's all i need to say oh we don't subscribe to gender roles over here i may say he she in reference to the masculine and or feminine energies we all have them within us if you ain't in that energy or that vibe flip flop yourself as you need to again don't try to force it it's just not for you take what flies excuse you take what flies actually you might want to anyway but now i'm trying to say take what resonates and let the rest fly because it could be a message for somebody else but anyway if you're trying to fly high, my beautiful butterfly, then take what flies. You know what I'm saying? All right, y'all. Um, I am big on numerology. Whether or not I call it out, but if and when I do, I'm intending it. I'm intending for it to maybe resonate with your life path number, the day or month you're born, potentially, and or even maybe the house that you want to pay particular attention to in your natal chart. If you so choose to look that up and research and learn more about yourself, you know what I'm saying? We digging deep and diving deep. We all about that self-healing, self-learning, self-love, you know, self-care type energy over here. So you got to put in the work. You know what I mean? You got to do the work. I'm just providing the information that I have received to hopefully enlighten you and help you. Right. So um, it's up to you on how you utilize it. I'm not responsible for the choices you make. That's why I tell you, use your free will and discernment. I'm not forcing you to do anything against your will. All right. We all grown over here. So you make the choice as you see fit for the betterment of your life. Right? It's all about you. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, oh, nope. Keep in mind that I am... I When I give dates and times, 
um, and even signs, y'all. I'm basing it off of Eastern Standard Time. All right. So if you do not live or not zone for the Eastern Standard Time, that's why I say time is really it, it's just whatever. You got to ask the creators of said time why they did what they did. But anyways, so it may be very different for you, especially if you live in a different time zone or even across the globe. You understand what I'm saying? So the signs may be different. The um, the times obviously will be different, even in the same time zone, potentially. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't know, just whatever. So um, it's up to you to do your own research if you really want to know. But when I give these times and everything, it may very well resonate more so for those who are in the same time zone or area versus another but it still doesn't even matter because again the energies the signs the planets where they're located blah 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 it all affects us some way somehow okay um but just keep that in mind when i do give times and signs and all that jazz so let's first get a word of prayer and bless this it has already been blessed but you know i like to you can't i don't feel like it can be blessed enough you know what i mean so anyway to the most high heavenly and divine ancestors angels spirit guides i come to you saying thank you thank you thank you thank you so very much for your time for your attention for your guidance for your leadership for just allowing us to be here thank you for allowing us to continually learn and grow and ascend thank you for helping us and guiding us through this process through this journey I pray, as always, that the message that I am here to receive and deliver is for the utmost good, as I know it will be, to help the viewer to grow, to learn, to prosper, to ascend, to strengthen them, to heal them, to nurture and nourish them, whatever they may need at the time of viewing, and may it play out as I know you will allow for the highest good of all involved. For that, I give thanks. I pray that you remove me, remove ego, bring nothing but the truth, the whole truth. So help me, God. Thank you for allowing me to be a clear and open channel to bring forth and deliver the message clear and straight. No chaser. Thank you for the voice, for the tongue, for the words, for the insight, for the clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to listen, to even speak. Thank you for choosing me, for using this vessel to serve and to give back and to help enlighten and heal the world as you see for me to do. For this, again, I ask, give thanks. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. All right, now, so let me give you a little bit of background information if you haven't, in case you haven't been keeping up with the series. So we are coming off of the new moon, and I told y'all in the last video, episode four, that, um, this week, you know, the week from the new moon, which was on the 1st of February in the sign of Aquarius transitioning into the sign of Pisces. Um, but at the time of the new moon, it's in Aquarius, which there's been a lot of uh, mental energy, right? Um, so much so some of you may have been kind of caught up and feeling trapped or kind of stuck in a way, but it's an illusion. So anyway, with that new moon and aqua, y'all may have been, um, as I mentioned in the last video, and check it out if you have not seen it, because the energy is still a high vibe, because I was trying to mix this first quarter moon with the new moon, you'll see in that video. So I do feel like there's some carryover potentially with that energy. And um, it's funny because, well, first of all, they stopping me because I forgot to mention which I don't really care to be redundant. But in case you are new to this series, um, we are utilizing the same decks, which are the Moonology and the Queen of the Moon Oracle. Those are our, our um, what do you call them? Those are our main, our primary, if you will, that will be very consistent throughout this series. I'm using the Moonology as the header and the Queen of the Moon as like the finisher, if you will. Um, the Moonology will give us what the reading overall is about and then the queen of the moon will wrap it up for advice um you know yeah advice to go on to move forward and we are still using the herb crafters tarot as clarification confirmation verification whatever you may need okay so with that being said and moving into this 
this first quarter moon energy, it is in the sign of Taurus and or will be um, again, according to Eastern, Stan Eastern Standard Time. And y'all, we are in Mercury retrograde <laughs> and I am ruled heavily by Mercury because I got, I was about to say Venus, I got Virgo heavy in my chart in Western, you know, astrology because I'm Leo Virgo cusp, Virgo rising, um, Venus, but in Vedic astrology, I am Gemini moon. And for those of you who don't know, I was to say Virgus. <laughs> Virgo and Gemini are both ruled by Mercury and baby does it ever affect me so anyways so if I'm stumbling and stuttering and whatever over my words y'all just gonna have to roll with it you, you know what I'm trying to say right hopefully uh, you get the message but so I apologize ahead of time but anyway with that being said because and then I truly don't believe in like slip of the tongues I mean they happen but I be feeling like spirit be trying to still get some kind of message out and so whatever i say whether i muck it up or not <laughs> is for a reason you understand okay so anyway first quarter moon in the sign of taurus now we go from the moon shifts into the sign of taurus on the 6th of february at 1753 which is what 553 I think that's a three. That look like a three. <laughs> Y'all sad when I can't even read my own writing. But anyway, so any of those numbers may be important to you. And the fives are screaming to me. And that's why I said when I was getting ready to just jump all into the channeling from the beginning. I, it's interesting that the, um, what was I saying about the five? Oh, episode five, right? The the fives are really speaking to me. And it's, it's major energy if y'all don't know for me anyway because they can mean different things to different people just depending on who you ask but that's the number of change of transformation of growth um it can sometimes be of you know it, it's challenging that's the word i like to use because when you say conflict i mean that can be a little negative I mean, it don't gotta be conflicting unless you see it as that you know what i'm saying because for one person it's not really a conflict it's not really a, a, a i just heard you, you're growing through adversity um, and that's why I say challenging, right? But that's the best I feel like, you know, we, uh, I have a newfound respect for the fives and the tarot even because it's like, they don't gotta be so bad. You know what I'm saying? Because you learn so much about yourself when you have to grow through adversity. Okay. Um, but it's all in your perspective. You see it as you see it. So I can't take that away from you. But anyway, it's, I do feel like, especially with 555, because that's what's really just standing out. Y'all might start seeing that a lot. And I have been, you know, on the clock, wherever you're passing, on the license plate, wherever you're seeing it. I feel like some of you, when you do see that, that is a, a, a strong indication that you're getting ready to go through a major change. Because if you put that all together, that's 15, which is a six, right? So it's like you're going and growing through that adversity to get to the six. Um, and the six to me is about balance, harmony, um, peace, right? It's, it's interesting because when you do get through the five in any of the suits in the tarot, that's essentially what you're making it to. You're making, you're stepping through to the six, which is about victory, balance, harmony, love, peace, joy, celebration, even, which is funny because, um, we'll, we'll get to it in a minute when you'll see the overall under our energy in the bottom of the um, tarot, we got the six of wands, which is powerful. So I do feel like many of you are successfully, um, reaching a stage or a point in your life where you can truly celebrate and be happy because baby, so glad I made it. So glad I made it. So glad I made it through. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like for real. Some of y'all really that's and that's enough said. That's why man give gratitude. Give thanks. Because without God, without spirit, without the divine, that's why I thank them all the time for their guidance, for their leadership. Because I know nothing in this world would happen if it wasn't for a spirit. You know what I'm saying? They the reasons why. We even make it from day to day, you know, because we got a purpose. It's like, it's like, that's why I say we just a, we just a vessel. We just here doing the, what, doing the legwork, if you will, like for real, we on the front lines, 
they in the background making it work. You know what I mean? But it's it's um, sometimes sad because people in the background don't get their respect a lot of the times. But it's like, nah, I thank God I wake up every day. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now what we about to do today? You know what I mean? What are we going to master today? Um, anyway, so that's interesting because even in the sign of Taurus, that's like I'm think I'm I'm getting and I'm seeing in my mind's eye the hierophant, which is the number five, and it speaks of upper level type shit, like ascending, mastering, like being staying committed and being down for the cause. You know what I mean? Staying ten toes down until you reach your goal. Staying committed to something and not folding just because it gets hard. Right. Because with that hierophant and that being the five of the major arcana, it's like, baby, you done you done been through some shiz naive. Your faith been tested. You know what I mean? Like what now is what I'm hearing somebody say. What now? But it's, it's, it's not in a way where you fed up, really. It's in a way like um, excited. You know what I mean? Because you done done it, done done it all, done done it all, done done it all. Like you done seen and done it all. So ain't nothing going to surprise you. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing too hard for you to handle. You already know that God ain't going to put more, more on you than you can bear. So it's nothing. That's what I'm feeling. It's nothing. <laughs> That's what somebody says, nothing. But anyway, Taurus affects your neck, vocal cords, throat, and thyroid glands. So as I said in the previous episode, some of you may truly be feeling more so than ever and around the, like I said, a couple of days before and um, after, maybe feeling um, changes or sensations. Your throat chakra, because y'all, I mean, sometimes I know y'all probably can't, can hear it or pick it up, but even that's why I say I still, (laughs) I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. Yes, like, why not? And I don't care if my voice crack. I don't care if I'm off key. I'm still going to give praise. You know what I mean? In whatever way that I'm able to. And I know that was kind of cracky right there, but it's all right. I just, I thank God for the voice to even do so. Cause some people can't even do that. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, let's see. And wow. Speaking of the moon will transition into the sign of Gemini at 527 on the ninth. Mind you, I didn't give the date. This is the eighth. The first quarter moon is going to be on the 8th of February. Like I said, in the sign of Taurus. And then it will shift into the sign of Gemini on the 9th at 527. Once again, any of those numbers or a combination therein, whatever is calling to you may be of importance or significant for you. Okay. And Gemini affects the shoulders, arms, hands, bronchial tubes, and lungs. So as I said, also in being ruled by Mercury, you might have some issues with your throat and speaking and your words forming and all that good jazz. Okay. You may be learning new words. I don't know. Okay. So in moving into the cards and opening up with the monology and your header here with um, full moon and cancer, this is interesting because this is like, I believe the third or fourth time that this has come out um, in January, the first couple of episodes, I do believe it came out back to back. And I do. And like I told y'all in last episode, I do feel like. Ooh, that's crazy because mind you, at the time of filming, we are, let's see what's today. We're almost, we're still kind of in the energy of the full moon. We recently just had the full, probably about uh, um, a few days ago, about five, six days ago, we had the full moon in Cancer, which is interesting. And I even told y'all last episode that I do feel like whatever you are or have intended to occur with the new moon energy it's definitely something significant, even following this full moon in cancer that we just had, um, whatever that may be for y'all. And for, with the new moon, I told y'all that was an aqua with all that mental energy and everything. Many of you truly are, I do feel trying to bring forth that peace of mind. I'm telling you, y'all may be going from the five of swords to the six of swords. That may be your victory. And that's the celebration. Cause baby, it ain't nothing like peace of mind, honey. It ain't nothing like serenity. I tell you, that's probably the most undervalued, most valuable 
commodity, if that makes any sense at all. People, I feel like, don't recognize the value in being stable-minded, in being at peace and not, because I can't say this enough, the mind, that's the battlefield. That's the devil's playground. If you in a state of confusion, chaos, you know, don't know if you're coming or going, mm -mm, that is not where you want to be. That's where the devil can come in, steal, kill, and destroy. And that's where they can, that's what, you know, that's the takeover right there. If you allow your mind, that's why they say an idle mind is the devil's playground for real. Because if you allow your, you, you, that's where you create. You know what I'm saying? That's where you even bring forth the downloads into that you receive the, the ideas, the epiphanies, the, the, the realizations. That's where you analyze and put it into practicality bring it down into reality if you will right and so you may need that Taurus energy for sure to bring it down to ground it into the earth to make it a, a, a tangible or material thing whatever that idea is especially if you may be trying to wreck your mind around how do you bring this business into fruition how do you um I don't know how do you even transition if between jobs or how do you build this house or how do you because I'm getting I've been getting a lot of that cancerian like family homely type of energy as well especially we got the full moon and cancer here so and that's fourth house energy um and or you may want to check where cancer is in your chart where ha which house it's transitioning through in your in your natal chart at this time because that may be significant not just the fourth house you understand what i'm saying cancer rules the fourth house um but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the sign that's in your fourth house at the time i pray that makes sense for those of you that know you know um anyway so what i'm getting to is especially for that to happen like it's like whatever this is whatever it is that you really have been like I said, wrecking your mind on trying to figure out how to make it a reality. Um, I feel like you're needing to get grounded, um, get stable. Like, like I'm here and be at peace. I'm here and be slow and methodical. I'm here and be practical. I mean, that is all Taurus energy. You understand? Um, try not to be overly anxious. Um, try not to be a worry war is what I'm hearing. Just, just calm your mind and it will all, you will see, you will clearly see what, what it is you need to do, say, how you need to move, all that. Okay. Let's go on. Cause I could be all day talking about this, but anyway, just because of what the card says clearly here, I feel like whatever this is, like I said, for many of you, it's, it's that five of swords energy. You're moving out of that. But for whoever, even if it's not mentally, um, because I just heard strategy too, but whoever this is for, even if it, it may be the five of wands energy, you know, you're, you're, you're getting out of, uh, fighting or being overly aggressive, you know, getting out of that. And even if it's not you, whoever the group that you may have been around, whether it's family, friends, or coworkers, you are moving away from that because you just want peace. You just want balance. You just want stability, whatever that means for you. And same difference for those of you, like I said, you trying to bring this business into fruition, you changing jobs, whatever you're doing, you moving out of that five of pentacles, being feeling lost or lack or like you don't have enough. You understand your worth and your value. You understand you got to have that stable mind in order to manifest your riches. You know what I mean? Understanding that you really already got it within you. It's just a matter of, like I said, bringing it down to earth and making it a practical, material, tangible thing. Um and then what did I leave out? The five of cups, same deal. If it's, if it's has to do with a relationship and a relationship can be with anyone or anything, y'all, um, it don't just gotta be romantic because like I said, I very much so feel that it may be strongly, if it does have to do with the relationship, it may be somebody within your family for this full moon and cancer to come out because that cancer vibe is all about family, the home, maybe even your mother. Okay. Or an older sibling. Check it. You know, it ain't just gotta be, like I said, a lover in that respect. But it very well, it very well can be. OK, especially if somebody got somebody moon is in cancer um, or they have a heavy hitter in cancer. Some moon rising um, north and or south. No, for me in Venus, of course. But anyways, let me read to you from the book. It is page 74 and 75. And it says. 
things are likely to get very heated as full moon in Cancer is a super emotional sign. So there could be something of an explosion of feelings around now or surrounding your question. It's important to be sensitive to other people when you pull this card. There are some very fine sensibilities around, so tread carefully as you move towards your goals or dreams. This card indicates an especially feminine time. It also heralds the time to deal with any family issues coming up. Nothing to worry about. It signals a challenge is now coming to an end. What I say? <laughs> what I say? This card also suggests both that a domestic matter or private issue will soon come to a head and that it's a great time to move house. The answer to your question lies in being a kind leader. This is a time for you to step up and agree to overcome your insecurities. And when you're attuning to the moon, I like to look at this as like an affirmation or, you know, yeah, that's basically how I look at it. So it says, it may be best to move towards what you want in a sideways manner. All right. One more time. It may be best to move towards what you want in a sideways manner. And that's perfect because you ain't got to walk the straight and narrow anymore. That's the way the cancers move. They move in grooves. <laughs> that's why I said, if you just be still, you can see how you need to move, which way you need to go. And it's okay if you take what they say, two steps forward, one step back or however, you know what I mean? Or if you got to move sideways a little bit, it's okay. Understand that as long as you making moves, take, you know what I'm saying? Getting, what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Making moves to your uh, destination, towards your destination, you all right. You still moving and growing. You know what I'm saying? Baby steps, right? It's a marathon, not a sprint. So additional meanings. Meditate to soothe heightened emotions. Don't be clingy. Stop sulking. And have you had enough family time lately? <laughs> I don't know why I always hear Janet on that one. What have you done for me lately? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. The teaching. The heightened emotions of the moon cancer combination can be, can't be ignored. However, cancer is one of the moon's two home signs. Look at this, along with Taurus. And what we doing? First quarter moon in Taurus. Y'all, this is big. So astrologically speaking, the moon loves to be in this sign. In fact, she rules cancer. This means that with this card, there's a sense that, quote, all is as it should be, end quote. Or, quote, don't worry, all will soon be well, end quote. All right? All right. Now, and moving into the bottom of the deck energy, we have hold your vision in the fixed moon. When I first saw this, y'all, um, and then looking at the moon, the way the moon looks, I heard um, half baked. So I don't know. I feel like for me to say that you, it's whatever you're like I said, if you've been racking your mind around whatever this is for you, it's not quite ready yet. It's half done. Um, it needs a little more time, but still hold the faith, stay true to what it is. That's why I went through all of that about whatever it is you're channeling and downloading and working through in your mind's eye to be able to bring it down with that Taurus energy, bring it down and ground it to the earth so that you can see the physical manifestations coming to fruition. Just continue to hold that vision. And I can't tell y'all what to do, but I strongly recommend that when you pray, first of all, you don't got to be what they say. It ain't like you got to be a broken record to continue to pray about the same thing over and over and over again. God has already heard you, you know what I'm saying? And knows your heart and not already. Know, I mean, they, they're giving you the vision. So they know what it is that you're trying to bring through. It's a matter of that's what we were talking about last episode of clearly speaking your intentions. And you got to come from a pure place in order for it to truly manifest. Because if it's if it's um, I don't know who this for, but this is coming through heavy. If you are in a space where you just being selfish, like me, 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 you're not going to get what it is you really seeking. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's, it's, I mean, it's about you, but it's not about you. Um, you really got to think of it as in a way of whatever it is you're trying to manifest. How can it be of good and service to the collective? Because that's what we're here for. We're here to help each other out. Um, we're here to serve. We're here to be of use by the divine for all. You know, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, I, just reevaluate and really sit with yourself and be honest with yourself and be honest with God. Like what? Why do you want? What is your why is what I'm hearing? Why do you want this? And if it's true and pure and meant for you, because not everything we receive as a download is necessarily meant for us, like for you to do personally. You understand what I'm saying? So 
um, check it. You know what I mean? Just because it look good, sound good, maybe even feel good, don't mean that it's right for you. Okay? So, um, I do feel like, especially with these mountains here, y'all, there have been many obstacles and blockages. I do, I also want to say that if it feel, if it's, because what I say from the beginning, not that you should cave and fold at the first sign of adversity, but if it's, if, if you constantly like this door closed, this door closed, you know what I'm saying? At some point you really got to really stand back and be like, because I do feel like what's the saying? Um, rejection is God's protection. It's, it's not for you. And you really, again, you got for whoever this is for, you really got to like take a step back and don't, like it said, what, what they say in the full moon in cancer, uh, uh not don't attach but that's basically what i'm getting to like don't be so attached to the outcome you know what i'm saying don't be holding on so tight with your crab with your uh pinchers you know what i'm saying let go let go because a that might not be for you it might be meant for somebody else to do or to be or to you know whatever um b there's something greater that is that is truly meant for you okay um because i'm hearing nobody greater nobody greater nobody greater than you so it's like maybe because with that change i'm feeling like some of y'all may truly be changing jobs changing careers or doing something where you're going you're seriously going through a major change because even when i said with that 555 um and i know that and honestly that's 15 that's like the the devil energy in the tarot right and that can talk about attachments addictions um, you know, obsession, uh, whatever, whatever. And it's like, you need to let go. Cause I was even getting the tower energy. If you don't let go something, boom, it's going to come and probably <laughs> catch you so off guard, knock you out, you know, come out of left field with it. Like, I don't, I don't feel like, cause with the tower, generally you aren't really ready for it. You know what I'm saying? Because you've been holding on for so long. It's only so much you can you can do. You can only hang on for so long. You understand what I'm saying? And then the divine comes through even more powerful, knock you off your high horse, and there you go. So it's like, why not just surrender? That's what I'm saying. Don't fight so hard trying to get to where you feel like where you supposed to be going when if you really step back and look from a bigger vantage point, you see that. Oh, no, that wasn't me. I wasn't supposed to do that, but I was supposed to give that word to Billy Bob Joe and he's supposed to do that. And then I'm supposed to go this way. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I don't know who that's for. But anyway, hold your vision. Pages 106 and 107. There are two main possibilities with this card. The first is that you need to stand firm in whatever situation you're in. The second, very different interpretation is that something is stuck. What I tell y'all, that could be that could well be referring to the situation you're asking about. If that's the case, have a think about what you can do to grease the wheel so that events move forward. Are you being stubborn? If so, that's great because I paused it at 616. That may be an important number for you. But anyway, if so, that's great because if you really want things to change, there's a solution. Stop digging your heels in. Be the one to break a deadlock. With two interpretations of this card, it's up to you to decide what's going on and which meaning applies to you. This offers up a chance for some self-reflection. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love, I love when they do that. Oh my. So, attuning to the moon, you can use this. It says, yes, just say the word a lot and see how it feels. <laughs> Additional meanings. Staying power, faith, or patience are needed. what I say? Keep the faith. Woo-wee. Mm. someone needs to back down let go right it just says someone needs to back down but i'm telling you let go for whoever i just had that whole spiel about avoid stagnation a personal or professional relationship will be enduring oh we that goes back to that full moon in cancer baby i mean it all does it, that's it's no coincidence y'all i'll be trying to tell y'all i can't make this up i can't pull these cars like this on purpose not not for real you know what i'm saying like spirit does it all and brings it all together as such for whoever needs it so the teaching in astrology there are three quadru quadruplicities oh yeah um i meant to say 
you may truly be i feel like this is with the fixed moon you may be dealing with a fixed sign um for sure and i already said with that first quarter moon being in taurus it may strongly be this taurus or they want you to embody this um taurian energy okay but it may also be um who else leo scorpio and or aqua and i told y'all with that new moon in aqua and i was trying to mix them two together last episode it may strongly be in aqua as well or any of the other signs that i just said it could be anybody but i truly believe with this coming out at the um as the overall under all energy what's really going on subconsciously it's a strong they got they got a fixed sign or signs heavy in their chart whoever you dealing with it could be you all right 828 as i said that all right so the fix let's see in astrology there are three quadruplicities cardinal fixed and mutable the fixed signs are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aqua. The fixed signs can be stubborn. So anything that's just starting as you draw this card may well last longer. I was also going to say, along with that stubbornness, um, a lot of the times, many fixed sign individuals, especially if they're not quite um, ascended, right? If they haven't quite learned how to balance their energy and really be in their energy, um, they it's difficult for them to handle change that's why they're fixed signs and that's why i said for somebody whoever this is they hold on for dear life to whatever they want to come through and um if this is you i'm telling you <laughs> you might want to let it go because if you do that you give spirit the divine time and space to work to really mold and transform whatever you have already put in work for and for it to come back to you even greater that's why i always pray that you know allow it to do whatever it needs to do in our life for the highest good and then some you know what i'm saying because our our best even though the, it can always be superseded right there's no limit right and so you really can't limit the divine you will be surprised. You will be amazed. That's why I say they never cease to amaze me at how they allow things to come together. It's already worked out anyway. Once you give it, once you, once you put them words, your energy, that vibe out into the universe, into the ethers, once you give it to God, that's why I said you ain't got to be a broken record in, in your prayers. Once it's done, it's done. That it is, is what God is saying. Um, it is done literally like as soon as you brr, whatever you didn't whatever you want you know what I'm saying it's done but understand that there's room to exceed your expectations and you have to let go of the expectation because you gonna that that will cut out a lot of disappointment I'm trying to tell you because that brings forth even more much more um ability or um What's the word I'm looking for? Basically, it allows you to be even more, to show more gratitude because you will be surprised. You will be blown out of this world at how, at, at how God works, at how God moves, at how God provides. It's, oh God, I can't, I mean, I can go on and on and on, but I feel like y'all get the point. So whoever this is that's really trying to have a stronghold and be stubborn and not want to change the way you do things, the way you think about things, your perspective, even um, you, you, you might want to, you better work on it because honey, you're going to be, I don't know. You're going to be stuck for a minute until you do basically. So it says, remember, we each have all star signs in our chart. It's just the way the astrological wheel works. So there's no judgment when we say that while it's admirable, how much staying power the fixed signs have, they can also be obstinate. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Okay. All right. Now, and moving into the tarot here, we got the two of water, Milo, and the nine of earth, Apple. And this is gorgeous energy, y'all. I'm talking about beautiful. That's why I was so hyped <laughs> from the get go because this is all of your wishes and dreams coming into fruition, y'all, because you have worked hard. The nine of earth is the nine of pentacles. Um, this is, um, I just heard self-satisfaction, but it's more of not in a necessarily a selfish, like the negative vibe of selfish that people think about. Cause it's okay to be selfish sometimes, 
Um, you have to, honestly, sometimes. But what I'm saying is like, it's not, it's not that, I mean, the nines, some, some see the nines as individualized energy. And that's basically what I'm trying to say that it may, it, but it's not in necessarily that way. It's just whatever you may have solo dolo, um, intended or put out there, you know what I'm saying? To God asking for, right. One of your personal wishes, I still feel like it's, it may have to do um, or deal with someone else because the two of water can talk about that soul. That's the two of cups. And it can talk about the, that soul, maybe that soul mate even type of energy. Um, I do feel like in this instance, it is simply talking about a soul contract and that doesn't necessarily have to be with another person, but I do feel like that it is for many of you. I pray that makes sense. And what I'm trying to say, um, even though this is for some, for many of you, it's a personal wish it still involves one, if not more people, okay, other than yourself. Um, I mean, because you can see clearly here, well, maybe you can't, but <laughs> if, 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 you know, I zoom in or whatever, you can see that there are more th than one bird in that two of cups, right? You got the bird in the bird bath and then the bird, uh, and I'm, I'm getting the vibe of hummingbirds, but, you know, it doesn't have to be. But um, anyway, that is feeding on the nectar. Ooh, ooh, okay. Birds may be a spirit guide totem for you. Um, and I said that like, ooh, ooh, because I do feel like for some of y'all who this has to do with the relationship, uh, even a romantic one specifically, somebody feeding, want to feed on your nectar, you want to feed on theirs or whatever, honey. Somebody getting that honey pot, okay? <laughs> And um, that is somebody's wish fulfillment, even if it's not yours. You understand what I'm saying? Because like I said, I could be reading, tapping into the energy of somebody you're connected to. So take it as it resonates. Either way, I always get with this tool of water, I get that somebody is um, purifying because these flowers, the Milo flowers are are white. They're pure. Something has been transformed. And I'm telling y'all with all that five energy, something needs to be if it hasn't already um, and even with that one bird that's in the bird bath, somebody, I mean, this could, this could, like I said, it still could be you solo dolo, just you having a soul contract with the divine. Um, and I do, and with me saying that, what I'm feeling, if it is just about you and nobody else, I do see you as being transformed and changed and renewed because you have bathed, you know, you have cleansed yourself of whatever impurities whether mentally, I do with the since it's two of cups, it could be emotionally, you know what I'm saying? You cleared some baggage from your heart, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Whatever the case may be, um, you have purified enough to even experience this change and for your, like I said, physical manifestations, because the nine of earth is that uh physical energy, right? It's it's the material energy. In order for it to come through, you've had to do this, or you will have to do this, which is beautiful. Um, and as I'm speaking, y'all, y'all will see the, these herbs and their benefits, the potential benefits that you can, if you choose to utilize these four. Okay. And as we all know, apple, I, every time I get the apple, apple is, it's the fruit of the earth. That's what I'm saying. Somebody for me to say, what is it? The nectar. And the, it's like, it's a sweet spot. Something is a sweet spot is what I'm hearing. Um, you may have found that sweet spot. And you cha-chinging, honey, because I did. That's why I keep hearing it's like that old school cash register. Uh, Y'all bringing in a dough, something like that, honey. Your business is booming, or it's about to. Um, and that's you may have had to really release or purify something, change something in the way that you that you did things, that you handle business. You know what I'm saying? That you deal with people. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's something big. And you have looked five um, minutes on the timer here. Hold on. But um, somebody has had to get to the core of things because I see, you know, with the with the nine of earth, somebody had to decor. Is that how you say it? Whatever. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Before, when you're trying to make that pie, the apple pie, um, you have you had to hollow out the center, something. Dig deep, you know, uproot, remove something from the middle <laughs> in the middle of it, in the middle of it. 
Like you done been through some major changes, but you still like the song say, I'm going to praise you anyway. Right? Mm-hmm. Go on then. Go on then. Peel back. I just heard peel back too. I feel like that's kind of like the fallback. Like I was trying to tell y'all from, from the jump, from the channeling, um, or even from the, the header is like, step back you know what i'm saying step back and look at the uh, from a bigger vantage point you know what i'm saying look at the bigger picture get out maybe you were too deep in the middle of it to see what needed to be done you know what i'm saying how you needed to move what you needed to change and that's why i'm feeling that peel back is like fall back you know what i'm saying just just observe watch listen wait for a sign a synchronicity you know what i mean um but you're gonna be able to because they got they got quite a bit that's apples are like abundance to me you know what I'm saying? I got quite a bit in that basket there. You know, maybe you put uh, what the saying is, maybe you you put all your eggs in a basket. And now it's time to disperse them a little bit, you know, here and there. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, as they say. Maybe I don't know something about that. But I do feel like something is nearing completion because one more step and you at that 10, that 10 of Earth. And that's baby, that's divine. That's like you done figured it out you done you got a, a notch on your belt if you will right you uh you bring in that generational wealth that's what i'm saying somebody somebody about to be booming and i don't care what it is y'all because we're talking about earth energy it very well may be your pockets getting fatter baby it very well may be you know what i'm saying the um because i'm hearing something about investments they're paying off it very well may be that you know you are getting like your finances are improving but it doesn't have to just be that because the 10 of earth can talk about, you know, your family. Like I just said, um, your family going to be good. Right. And for me earlier, talking about that cancerian energy, you very well may be even uh, building a new home, changing home, moving homes or just um, I just heard restabilizing. Maybe your foundation literally on your home was messed up, but I feel like it's talking about metaphorically too. Like spirit is saying, you've had to um, mend the bridge is what I'm hearing. You've had to heal whatever this relationship is. Maybe with your mother, like I said, maybe with an older sibling, whoever it may be, that is what's bringing forth this. You've healed a generational cycle and it's definitely paying off for generations to come forever and ever amen thank you lord like for real oh my goodness anyway and moving into the um the bottom of the deck energy for the tarot baby you about to celebrate i got the victory i got the victory beautiful energy this is leo energy we just said y'all may be truly dealing with a fixed sign leo being one of them doesn't have to be it could be any other fire sign for that matter but here i love this beautiful card and i do apologize with the lighting it's kind of hard to see but still you get the vibe somebody's setting up here for celebration um <laughs> i always hear celebrate celebrate dance to the music so you really about to have a party and when i first um saw this i heard it's a party it's a party it's a party but remember from the jump i told y'all with this coming out i mean it's definitely a victory and definitely a celebration you've worked hard to get up out that five of wands right you worked hard to come up out of that chaos confusion conflict um i just heard conflict resolution you worked hard to to learn that and to implement that and i feel like it's something about boundaries too and wow because i think that came out uh we'll see in just a minute i believe that came out as the overall under all energy for your finisher here, which we'll, like I said, get to in just a few minutes. But it's definitely some, because even with these candles, the way that they're set up, it's like you have had to develop and implement your boundaries to whoever may have been in that five of wands type of energy. And baby, that's something worth celebrating, okay? Because that's that's even a hard, especially if you're just so used to it, well, it can be um, a difficult, a challenging, let me say it like that um lesson and 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 uh test right in order for you to implement and what i was getting ready to say is especially if you are known to be one to give 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 no matter what you know what i'm saying even if you've been stepped all along walked all over whatever whatever that is part of it you know learning to establish and set your boundaries because people just they gotta realize they can't no like mm -mm. i'm hearing um 
I just heard somebody, I'm a child of God. Some Somebody keeps saying that, but it's like, you can't just walk all over God's property. <laughs> Y'all might be listening to that, by the way. That used to be the ish back in the day, honey. That got me through there. But um, for real, like you can't just you can't just mistreat and misuse and abuse God's property, you know. Mm -mm. So anyway, and moving into your finishers here, and this yet again has come out. This came out last episode, and I'm trying to tell y'all they are like if if you ain't got it by now, they're trying to tell you your wishes are granted. Okay, just hold the vision, keep the faith, understand. I told y'all it's half baked. It ain't ready yet. But I promise you, for many of you, by fall, it's coming through, baby. Because this is the heart, this is the moon that comes through during the fall. Um, the well, for let me say the the autumn equinox. Okay, that's when you very well may see your what you have. Uh, you will reap what you have sown. Okay, whatever whatever end of the wheel or the spectrum you're on, honey, because it can go both ways. Understand, you're going to get abundance of that shit, though. <laughs> like, like, and I'm not even trying to wish, I'm not, I do not have any ill will or wish any um, negativity on anybody, but it's just the fact of life. That may be, in, may, that may have been your, because um, I'm hearing the facts of life. That's old, that old show. That may have been one of y'all's show coming up. Um, But I'm just saying, that's just how, the, that's just how it works. That's how karma is. That's what I'm saying. No matter which end of the wheel you're on, you know, what goes up must come down. What goes around comes around. So if you putting out negativity, you best believe that's what you're going to receive and vice versa. But I pray y'all all putting out good, good vibes out here. You know what I'm saying? So um, I do feel like there's an abundance of clarity, mental energy for sure. As I said last episode, because of the way this, the fruit basket is, um, look at that. And going back to the nine of earth, the way that it's at her crown right here. I even talked about that mask that she's wearing last episode and I still am getting the same vibe, but some of y'all need to come on from behind that, honey. Take it off. Stop trying to hide yourself. Shine bright like a diamond, Rihanna. Come on through, baby. But it's like, um, I'm also getting today that, um, it's like, I heard somebody say, don't be fake. It's, it's like what I said about stepping back and really reevaluating your why and what it is you desire and what um what is the abundance you seek and why because somebody being fake about what they truly want i feel like some of y'all may only want this because because i don't know really you may because somebody else said you that's what you're supposed to do or be or whatever but it's like i was saying because I, I i ain't get that vibe for nothing whoever i'm talking to about it's not for you. You got to let it go, man, because either way, it's going to be gone regardless. It's going to be stripped from you regardless whether you want to let it go or not. It's up to you on how long you want to be stubborn and stuck and stagnant. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But I highly recommend because, you know, you know, you know, if it's not for you, they've been talking to you all this time. You just been ignoring it. You understand what I'm saying? You know. So it's like gone and cut, cut, cut your losses is what I just heard. Um, let's go on and read from this, um, pages 90 and 91, the harvest moon fruition as the seasons turn, there's always a time when all the potential of the spring beginnings is manifest. The crops grow tall and are ready to harvest. And they have done this from a fallow field, which no, excuse me, from a fallow field into which we have planted seeds. The trees have flowered and now there is fruit to pick. It is time for the harvest. And the affirmation you can use. I welcome the joyous fruition of all the intentions I set. Once again, I welcome the joyous fruition of all the intentions I set. When we are able to bring something into fruition, whether it be planting, a project, or a change in ourselves, it is the perfect time to celebrate all that we are grateful for and to mark our achievement. That's going back to that six of wands, y'all. That was underneath the bottom of the tarot. We may have worked very hard to bring this new situation into reality. We may have been patient in the way we have worked over time and sacrificed much to make it happen. The harvest moon is the time to be happy about our success and to share it with others. Our ancestors would dance and sing and have community festivals of thanks. When I say from the get-go, y'all, allow them to come through because that's an opportunity to have more gratitude and to give thanks. So our ancestors would dance and sing and have community festivals of thanks, all to celebrate the fruition of all that hard work and to thank the gods for their assistance. 
These times of high energy are also times to really focus on your body as they, ke as they can be quite taxing on our systems. If we don't take care, it is often a time we can get ill. This month, mm -mm, this moon normally falls on the moon closest to the autumn equinox in the northern hemisphere. Okay. And the companion stone or metal is garnet. And I will read to you from the from my crystal book that is linked below um, about garnet. And I also will list because, like I said, this came out last video. So I highly recommend you check that out. But there are various forms of garnet, which as I'm speaking, I will allow them to play through so that you can see those as well, um, because it just for the sake of time and length of this video, I'm not going to read through each and every one of them. You can pause or even rewind, do whatever you need to do if you want to take notes so that you get that information for you, yourself. OK, so we're going to move on into the bottom of the deck energy here. And this is like I told you, this is that boundaries. It then came through, right? Um, it's waxing gibbous. What is that? Three? That's interesting. So let me find that in my notes. Hold on one second. Oh, wow, y'all. Look at this. So the waxing gibbous three, according to my notes, is going to occur on the 11th of this month of February and um it is transitioning from gemini into the sign of cancer at 1827 once again that's eastern standard time which is 6 27 p.m and i just it was 6 27 on the timer as soon as i said that that is crazy and that is crazy confirmation the organs or systems or body parts that still that will be affected are still um ruled by gemini which are the shoulders arms hands uh, bronchial tubes and lungs okay but cancer just to let you know cancer affects the stomach mucosa breast womb and ovary so you still may be feeling sensations and stuff in those areas as well okay that's crazy Whew, no coincidence i know so um you, uh what's i gonna say you may also be dealing with I already said somebody maybe cancer moon or have cancer heavy in their chart from the header, but even a Gemini, right? And um, the crazy thing too is that this number 12 on this card that came out last episode um, with the hanged one at the bottom of the deck. And I was telling them because the ones and twos, especially the ones kept coming out uh, heavy, kept talking to us that uh, episode. And I told you the new moon occurs on the 1st of February and it transitions from aqua to Pisces on the 2nd. So again, it's still, it's high vibe. Something, something powerful is occurring within this week from the new moon um, on and even through Maybe to the full moon, to be quite honest, y'all. But especially a few days after this first quarter moon. Because, like I said, the first quarter moon is occurring on the 8th. Um, the waxing gibbous is uh, number three is on the 11th. Going from the sign of Gemini to uh, Cancer. Okay? But as I already told y'all, some of y'all truly, that was y'all's lesson. That was y'all's test. Whether or not you're going to, because for this to come out as the overall under all energy in order to bring forth your manifestations into fruition, you had you had to learn to set your boundaries and to be OK with them. Um, and it's interesting because look how look how she's looking up to the fruition like that's all she wants. But it's also interesting in the way that I don't know, I take that that might be a flower now that I'm looking at it um, close up. But it's still at first glance, I thought it was either a butterfly or a bird. And even if we look back at the um, fruition card, you see that coming, whatever that is, it looks like it may just be debris or fairies or I don't know. But I feel like that was when I first saw all that stuff kind of fluttering off that white, the, the stuff being purified from her mind, if you will. Um, I first thought it was butterflies and or birds. Either way, you we already got the birds in Milo, right? birds butterflies butterflies signify transformation or change for me and i do feel like, like i told y'all already some of y'all are truly going through a head change <laughs> you might be changing your hair girl you might or guy you might be um 
switching up the look you might be really like i don't know doing something different which is good it's for the better though and and it's it's done or needs to be done because with that again that fruition at 37 potentially being a 10 or a 1 and i told y'all you some of y'all really trying to move on to that 10 of pentacles which again can potentially be a 1 you ready for you ready to take what you've learned through this cycle and continue on on a new journey on a new path right um understanding though along the way with that 12 energy in the boundaries that is potentially piscean energy that is the hanged one energy which is what i was referencing back to you've had to learn how to truly step back and um i told them last episode put yourself in time out you understand take your time go deep within reflect on what it is in you that you need to do or um change or you know be different right not that you got to change your whole you but at the same time, that's the part of growth. That's the part of evolution. We are constantly, or you should be constantly changing, growing, adapting, you know what I'm saying? Rebuilding. Um, I, I hear replenishing, rejuvenating. And that's that six of wands energy too, coming back from that nasturtium. Um, like, man, that's, this is beautiful energy though. But um, I know it's difficult. It can be. To really set those boundaries and and make sure that nobody crosses them, because you know they're gonna try you, they're gonna still try you. You know what I mean? So let's get on and read this because this one's kind of long. Pages thirty nine through forty one. Ooh, y'all got me hype, man. <laughs> it says, judging what you need and what you don't need allows you to place healthy boundaries. You teach people how to treat you. Judge what is healthy and right for you with clarity and care simplify that's where that fruition that abundance i'm telling you that mental abundance is coming through that's that clarity <clears throat> the affirmation you can use i can say yes or no with authenticity and clarity once again i can say yes or no with authenticity and clarity in times of sickness or say the presence of very strong emotions such as grief we often naturally simplify we cut out all the extras that are too hard or too complex at the at that time we might not take up an invitation to an event we might have to, quote, work, end quote, at attending. We might actually watch a film we know uplifts us. We might only want to see or communicate with friends we know and trust to understand, love, and support us. Warts and all. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> we might only choose to spend the depth of our heart and time with a few people rather than many. And we become vastly sensitive to those we dis we now discover take their unfair share of our energy. That's the one. That's what I was talking about. The ones trying to walk all over you. You know what I mean? We might also look to our body more compassionately and eat nourishing foods to heal it. Do comforting things for it to recover more easily or just decide to rest it completely. If we are healthy people, we naturally action a kind of simplicity and a set of boundaries to protect ourselves so we can give ourselves some space to heal. What if we did this all the time? What if we more consciously chose more simply and specifically for the benefit of our own mind, body, and spirit? Yes, life is complex, but it can be richer and more enjoyable if we if we pare back what is, quote, negatively extra, end quote, and choose a more deliberate and authentic path. That's why I was telling y'all to remove that mask, okay? We don't need so much fluff and people pleasing and running about madly and fast food and fast fashion and gossip and hardcore Olympic level scheduling and stress. We just don't. Look at what you chose to do last time you were forced to simplify. If it was a positive choice, maybe that could be your starting point for something better today. This judgment you made was for you and it worked. Not all judgment is bad or to be avoided. Every single one of us judges every day. We judge what brand of washing powder to buy among many. We judge what TV show is good and what isn't. We vote, which is a judgment on trust. We have a legal system with a, quote, judge, end quote. We judge what we will accept and what we will not. If we don't, we do have values, nor, wait, if we don't, we do have values, nor do we have boundaries. No, <laughs> that's why it's, they don't make sense. If we don't, we do not have values, nor do we have boundaries. And in parentheses, they have huge issues for some in parentheses to simply focus on your own experiences and not look outside yourself for justice may all be very nice for gurus but for those of us who want to be the change they wish to see i judge happily 
that certain things are unacceptable. So I strive to change those things. People judge that wailing wasn't right. No, 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 I'll skip the line, sorry. People judge that slavery wasn't right and involved themselves in change, even to the extent of waging war. People judge that wailing wasn't right, so it's been banned in most countries. We judge that apartheid wasn't right and people died to change it. One brave man, Nelson Mandela, was jailed for decades as a result. Founders teach people how to treat us, and this is a kind of positive judgment. The companion stone or metal is obsidian. All right, so let's get on into the metals and stones. Okay, you guys, so look, <laughs> I'm going to start with garnet. I'm going to do the same thing because there are several varieties of garnet. Um, as, at, what am I trying to say? I'm going to do the same thing with obsidian because there are several different varieties of, of obsidian as well. But there are two that are on the same page with obsidian that I felt called specifically the sheen is what really drew my attention. Um, but you'll see in just a minute what I mean. But the it's black obsidian and sheen obsidian that I will read to you. But I'll still put in as I'm speaking, which you probably have already seen by now. <laughs> but I will put them throughout here, the different varieties, so that if you are interested, whatever uh, you're drawn to, you may want to take notes, utilize either one of them, okay? So with garnet, it's found as a dodecahedral and trapezoidal crystal in combination masses and layered, quote, plates, end quote. Colors include red, pink, udolite, udolite pink or red, rhodolite, green, I still don't know how to say this, grossularite, emerald green, uveravite, black melanite, orange spessart, spessartine, spessartine, red or purple almondine, greenish yellow andradite, and yellow and brown hessonite. For details, it says refer to the specific crystals, which like I said, you'll see them going across the screen at some point or another. Astrological associations. Leo, Virgo, Capricorn, and Aquarius. Okay, <laughs> telling y'all, y'all somebody, some of y'all got something to do, or y'all got this heavy in y'all chart. Either one of those signs. All right, it's great for the heart chakra, for healing qualities. It brings courage, creative energy, vitality, abundance, flow, change, and awareness. Right, physically, it helps anemia, arthritis, blood cleansing slash detox, blood flow low blood pressure, rheumatism, underactive thyroid, what I tell y'all, Taurus help or effects. So some of y'all may truly want to utilize this garden. There's no coincidence that that came back out, right? Um, as far as the fruition goes. So let's see. Uh, so it helps with anemia, arthritis, blood cleansing or detox, blood flow, low blood pressure, rheumatism, underactive thyroid and deficiencies of iodine. Calcium, magnesium, and vitamins A, D, and E. It enhances the health of the bones, spine, heart, and lungs. <laughs> Leo is the heart. Gemini is the lungs. Um, bones and spine. And, it, and that just really depends on what bones we're talking about. But still. Um, so I'm getting that Aries energy because it's something with the teeth. Something, I don't know why I'm seeing that. But I just see somebody like really clenching, grinding their teeth or something like that. And then it balances sex drive. Emotionally and spiritually, it brings emotional balance, helps depression, chaos, disruption, <laughs> and emotional trauma. I laugh because that's all that five could potentially be some of that five, especially five of wands type energy, right? It's good for magic and spiritual devotion. And that's garnet. And like I said, I'll, I'll list the different varieties along um, on the screen as well. Now, moving on. Oh, did I tell you the pages? 36 and 37. Okay. Now for uh, Obsidian, they're on page 93 for the ones that I'm getting ready to read to you. Obsidian is a volcanic glass that occurs in a variety of colors. Black, brown, green, red or black, brown or black, mahogany, black with rainbow patterns or colors, silver or gold sheen, black and white snowflake patterns, blue, pur blue purple, translucent translucent black and brown nodules and that's called the apache tears which apache tears uh, oh that's on this page too <laughs> wow the apache tears is great with grief so if any of y'all are experiencing that very much so you may want to use that anyway i'll get to that in a minute because i didn't re realize that was right here so these are all the sheen the the wreck the 
Obsidian, Black Obsidian, Sheen Obsidian, and Apache Tears are all on this page, 93. So they are very significant, I feel. Um, so astrologically, Obsidian is asso associated with Aries. That's probably why I was getting the teeth part. Aries, Scorpio, Sag, and Capricorn. It's good for the base or the root chakra. Okay. They use, in this book, they use base, but understand that base and root can be used interchangeably if you don't know that. So healing qualities, it brings wisdom and offers protection, good for learning. Physically, it's good for the colon and male sexuality and qualities, helps gastroenteritis, irritable bowel syndrome, wind pains. I'm not sure what the heck that is as far as wind pains um, and nausea. It helps you recognize the cause of dis-ease, okay, emotionally or spiritually. It's grounding. It helps self-defeating patterns and subconscious blockages. Y'all might truly need that because what I say with that whole division, um, and I told y'all, y'all need to bring, like, if you're coming out of that mental confliction or, you know, overanalyzing, worry, stress, anxiety, whatever, whatever, and to help you bring your visions into the physical, you very well may want to use this. Um, it enables you to see your dark side. Integrate spirituality into everyday life. It aids access to roots and past experiences, acts as a mirror of the soul. It lets you take a long, hard look at yourself and then smile. <laughs> I love that. So black obsidian is astro astrologically associated with sage. It's good for the base chakra. <clears throat> Healing properties or qualities include good for protection, creativity. <clears throat> Excuse me. Protection, creativity, male qualities and intuition. Physically, it's good for digestion and survival instincts. Emotionally or spiritually, grounding. Good for scrying, which is a form of divination and shamanic healing. The Sheen Obsidian. It's silver or gold sheen on black obsidian. It's astrologically associated with sage too. And it's good for the base chakra. Healing qualities, good for patience, change, and delays in your life plan. Because I'm telling y'all, many of y'all really are... Or will find yourself kind of stuck, stagnant, especially if you're being stubborn, okay? Physically, it tackles the sources of dis-ease. And then finally, for what I'm going to read to you, is Apache Tears. And this is small, translucent, black or brown nodules. It's uh, astrologically associated with Aries, great for the base chakra. In healing qualities, it's good for change, moving forward in life, forgiveness and spontaneity. Combat self-limiting beliefs. Baby, mm, use it. <laughs> use it. <laughs> Physically, it's good for the knees. Helps vitamin C and D deficiencies. Muscle spasms and snake bite. It aids in detox. Emotionally or spiritually, it's good for emotions and emotional balance. It helps you to shed tears, especially repressed tears. Okay. It helps behavior change, forgiveness, negativity, and grief. All right, baby. I love it, y'all. I love it. You might you you're gonna need it because you know any what I'm getting to right now is that anytime you go through change, it's it's it's, it's even if you're not physically or literally losing somebody in the physical, um, as far as somebody leaving this earthly realm, it's still the same vibe and energy, y'all. So you may be shedding tears or grieving you know, shedding your past self, or even I, I wanted to say, that's why I stuttered a little bit because I was getting ready to say losing your past self, but it's not like you're losing anything y'all. Cause I always say L's ain't nothing but lessons. You have to let go of your old self because it's no longer serving you. And you may have to put up boundaries for yourself. Like for real, I'm, I said that for somebody else, like put up boundaries to others, but it may be to yourself, especially those mental boundaries to keep yourself from going back to them negative thoughts. Like, nope, 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 nope. When you find yourself, when you, look, I can't even talk. Hold on. Like when you find yourself wanting to harbor or, you know, go back to them old feelings or old ways or whatever, what have you, it's like, nah, baby, it's time to really release and let that go. And I know it's scary. Trust me. I don't, I, I'm there with you. Like, for real. I I go. I've been there. Right. I was getting ready because I don't want to. You got to be careful in what you say. But, you know, we're all learning and growing. And that's the whole. That's the whole thing. That's the whole process. 
You, you might be, like I said earlier, taking two steps forward just to go back a little bit or to go sideways a little bit. You might feel like you're not really ascending because you're moving laterally. But as long as you're taking lessons and blessings with you to not go back to the same spot that you were in, no matter if it's a lateral or what's the other one? What's the other one? What's the other one? I can't think of the word. But anyway, upward move. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. That hierophant energy. No matter if you if you moving on up, you know what I'm saying, to the east side or just going, um, I don't know, because maybe you came from the south side, you moving on up to the east side. Even if you if even if you going from the east side to the west side, it's okay. <laughs> I, don't I don't know how else to really to say, y'all. I feel like y'all know what I'm trying to say. It's okay. As long as you moving, honey. Long as you move and 10, 11 on the timer, as I said that, but I don't want to keep y'all because I really could keep y'all all day talking about this. That is what I have. I'm going to leave it there. I pray that it resonates. If it does, you know what to do. For those of you who are new, that means comment your testimonies down below. You never know how this may help someone grow, but especially in including yourself though. Okay. Whether or not somebody comes to mind, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much for doing so. I truly appreciate it. If you want to join me for another episode, you can check the link in the description box or you can check any other playlists on my channel. OK, I hope to see you there. If not, please take care until the next one. Y'all be easy. Don't forget your love and light because it truly makes everything all right. Deuces.